want to say something small about materials engineering. Maybe it's new to you. It's, it was part of the Institute of Mining and Mineral Engineering. The Institute of Mining and Mineral Engineering was set up to look at the mines. And it was made up of mining engineers, mining engineering, geological engineering, and metallurgical engineering. Hello. Now, when you hear the name metallurgical, it's talking about metals. But unfortunately, at that time, the only metal they were looking for was gold. So, most of the metallurgical engineers are rather mineral processing and extractive metallurgical engineers. And they were not able to work in areas like Valco, and it works, it still works. And so we set up the metallurgical, uh, the materials engineering that looks at metals, polymers, ceramics, and composites. So the reason was that now we are talking about mining petroleum. One of the challenges, and looking at the presentation, we are all trying to cut down costs. But if you look at mining in Ghana, from the ore to the gold, the only thing that we supply our personnel, everything is imported. Both and not. Everything. Now, when you go to the advanced country, some of the things are made there. So that one can cost. So if metallurgical engineers, we can make steel balls, then that is serious. Liners, that's serious. Everything. It's not only in mining. From medicine, from the patient to the doctor, nettles, scissors, everything important. Now they start to, to set it. An economy of this nature can never grow. The definition of economics is the production, the distribution, and consumption of goods and services. Ghana consumes more goods than produces. They provide more service personnel than needed. So unemployment. So as we think about uh, uh, developing mind power, we have to think about training how to make things for ourselves. Almost everything here important. This one, this one, buttons, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so let's stop it here. Let's continue. So I'll give a brief introduction. Let's go. You, it doesn't matter. Here's the problem. In Ghana, we have a lot of working, welding activities and operations on a small scale basis. Wherever you go, Accra, Kumasi, Takrade, you see a lot of them. A large concentration is in magazine Kumasi, Abosoka, in Accra, Kokompe, Takrade, and a lot littered everywhere. This small scale are semi skilled. We say semi skilled because they have some skill, but they don't have formal skills. They develop their skills through apprenticeship, not formal ones. So they don't have formal education and training. I just put this one there, approximately about one million, because I can count. Wherever you are, if you want to move, you will see if I move there. Now to continue. They do a lot of repairs on cars, pressure vessel stands. And I want to say this. Years back, I was in South Africa, I read in the news, 207 buses are banned. The reason, it caused a lot of accident fatalities. I was in this country, so I couldn't respond. It is not the 207. The 207 is a van outside. They have only seats in front and it is used to carry goods. And this is free information. You don't weld the seat of a car. Look at your proper car. It is not welded. It is formed and bolted. Welding is something else. So they buy this car. Then they do the seats by welding. The people are not experts. No stress analysis, no calculation, no burning movement, no shear force. So when there's an accident, the fatalities are high. So 
although they support the economy, they do not follow any standard or code of practice. It is freelance, freestyle. Now, seriously, they also wear chassis of a car. They wear pressure vessels. Very serious indeed. So when we are having explosions, and when we are having accidents, it is not the devil who wants blood to drink. It is lack of knowledge that we have allowed people who are not supposed to do what they were to do. The works are not inspected and supervised. So that's why we have the accident. Now, welding is indispensable. When I say indispensable, you can't do go away with it. You can never produce a pipe from here to commerce. You have to join it alongside. So in the oil industry, about 20 to 30 percent of the activities are welding. The ships, the rigs, the pipes, and the water welding, everything. And when we talk about local content, our workers are not started. They will never be employed. So this, if you look at the color word, we were building our stadium for the Afghan camp. We brought workers from us because our workers are not started. Them. 
buy a new one. That is what comes to Ghana. It is home use. <laughs> you are in Ghana and your home is abroad. <laughs> that is where. It is. Now let's look at these stresses. All engineers reduce burning moment and shear force. Okay? But these people will just put the world anywhere. But a free tuition here is that you put the world where the burning moment is minimum. Because wells can't, I mean, resist burning. Now, for all engineers, when I stretch up my hand like this, this is a cantilever, right? But in school, when they are teaching us cantilever, they let us assume that it is a continuous material. But sometimes you join. So because God is a welding engineer, if you look at my hand, there's a joint here, right? And if this joint has been here, I will look abnormal, but the same length, isn't it? And if it, it were here, I will still look abnormal. So you need a lot of stress analysis to know where the joint is. The next step, and it's the pressure vessel. You have to form the main and then do some joint. You don't work anywhere. You do your calculation and put it. But you see that our welding riders can do so many to put the world here, anywhere, anywhere. And here, the very moment will be. So when you put in the pressure vessel, LPG gas, and it's full, and then when release, so the loading is not static, it's fatigue, right? And then you are having explosions, and then we are still praying in tongues to spawn. <laughs> now, another thing about welding is that you may introduce cracks. So you need to inspect, but our people don't inspect. You realize that your exhaust fills the new world. Exhaust is not a critical mass, so even if it's break, you don't die. But wherever you weld, it's the same place that you fill. Because that material, the white man will throw it away and put a new one there. This is to tell you that welding is not for drop out. Welding is not for drop out. It is for engineers. So we must take note of that. When you travel outside, you will never see wayside welders because it is a high level way. Now, welding involves science, materials, design, materials and design. So welded is not a profession for dropouts, nor as an artisans. It is a profession for the educated and trained. So Ghana, we have turned the thing upside down. Every, most things in Ghana are upside down. You want high level security, you put educated people out and then other people down. So they will throw tear gas and they will die. It's a serious issue. The best, we have few things up there and then the down, the load will go outside. Engineers, graduates are in the security services doing high level work. It's the opposite here. Let's continue. Now, there's a challenge in the world in profession. I've said in the oil industry, there are a lot of wedding activities. You can't build a house on the sun. So even the houses, they are containers that you weld. You have to weld and bring the oil from the sea home. The pressure vessels, the one that stores it, the one that carries it, all of them, we have to import them. So we are losing job, and we don't have work for our graduates. So there's a wide gap between those of us who have gone to school and learned metallurgy and welding and everything, and those who are at the wayside welding. They have some skills, but they don't have the knowledge. I have the knowledge. I don't have the skills. So we have to bridge the gap between them. So we have knowledge, education, and skill. And this is where somebody asks a question. We have a mistake. We, we have Reynolds ideas even in the whole country. No university can train an engineer to be skillful for a particular job. The job of the university is to provide education at the percent.
education field, the industry does 80% of training with the slot. So the problem in Ghana, when you go outside, you do engineering, every vacation you go for internship. And when you finish, you work under a qualified engineer who trains you. So the training is the industry. The university will give you a broad knowledge. I can't give you knowledge and education and train you specifically for the oil, for the mining. No, the, 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 the things are different. But when you have the basic and you go there, and the industry treats you. especially those who weld under the sea. You have to be paid for diving, you have to pay to weld, and then they charge per hour. Let's continue. <laughs> the next slide. Uh -huh. So there's lack of well-structured institutions. We don't have institutions up to the high level. I did my master's. My students are doing their PhD in welding. Now there's non-existence profession. Now, all engineers have professions to control, regulate, and assure quality. Welding is free for all. Fortunately for us, the world gates, that is not critical. Uh, but nobody will employ them to weld that critical thing. They are not certified. Continue. So these are the areas that we need. Welders, certified ones. Welding supervisors. Welding inspectors, welding educators, welding engineers, and then the professional body. In fact, if we train our welders in the mines everywhere, and even the oil goes away, the welders will deform the country. Because it is not only the oil industry that you need welders. You have to build high structures, and most of them are welded. You always have to import them, so you know what we do? We take loans from them, we bring, and they'll come and chop the loans, and they will pay the loan. <laughs> so we also have to develop. And let me tell you, no white man will train you to compete with him. We are the market. So what Ghana do does is that education is almost free. You train them, Ghanaians are brilliant, first class, second class, they don't know what to do with them. So fine, let him give them scholarship. And then you go and we use them. So it's like making pavno soup. And then the white man will skim the oil and take it away. And then you want them to train you. It will not. We have to train our own people to compete in the world. So a welder is the one who actually performs the act of welding. Now in manual welding, the quality of the world depends on the skill of the welder, on the mood. If the wife has annoyed him, <laughs> it is going to affect the work that he's going to do. Therefore, you need a supervisor. There are manual skills. You do, they need to improve that by good training and supervision. The welder must be satisfied for a particular job. And a satisfied welder holds a certificate that as a bit they prove that he has passed an examination involving a certain materials, processing, thickness, range, techniques. In fact, some time ago, the welders were complaining that people were not taking them. And somebody asked me, I said, even me, if I were, I have a job, I will take you. <laughs> the fact is a fact. So I started talking to the government, but thank God, the Ghana Petroleum Company, and the, I think the World Bank have got money now. They want to train uh, that welders for the oil market. Otherwise, we are not going to benefit much. So why the supervisor is someone who rose to the position after years of welding, education, and training. 
and of practice and word. And so you upgrade, upgrade from word to a word supervisor. So it's an upgrade. So the least paid person in the industry is the word. But even that, the money it takes is not no be small. <laughs> so the person provides leadership for the group of welders. And he makes sure that everything is done according to uh, schedule. Okay? After welding, when you are welding, somebody supervises you. After that, somebody inspects. Yes. The inspection, the inspector approves or rejects a wedding. The ones that we have over here, it is already approved. Why the person wells is approved? <laughs> but you see, when there's a defect and a problem, the, the, the accident doesn't occur now. It occurs some months later. So you never know that it is the welder who was the cause of the crack and accident. So this is a pipe, it's not clear, a pipe which is being inspected by radiography. So you weld a pipe and you have to inspect. I've seen a lot of pressure vessels, so many wells, plenty of them in the market. Now, it's also a pressure vessel using welding. So it's a very serious thing. It means that from welding, you have other personnel. And inspection is not only for welding. The mines, the hoist, and everything you have to inspect. So these are the methods of inspection. Now, when we develop and move into it, it means a lot of personnel, a lot of jobs. And these techniques are also used to inspect aircraft. Any time the plane flies, I'm not scaring you, but planes have a lot of cracks. That's my area of specialization. So what we do is that we measure the crack. The crack will progress to a point. And we don't want the crack to, to fracture the plane on top there. So any time it comes, we inspect. When it gets into critical, we take it off. And any time a ship comes, we have to inspect to see whether there's a crack, and then they repair before it goes. So the inspection, you make money, you repair, you make money. There's a lot of money over there. <laughs> <laughs> People like money. So, so we also have welding educators. It's also certified. And then he has the experience to provide the welding education and training. Welding engineer. See, you have to design. Tell me where the joint has to be, how to prepare the joint, the electrode to choose. Every electrode has inscription on them, telling you the strength, the position to weld and everything. But the ones over here, it's also free for all. So they buy and do everything. So the engineer will specify everything, and then the welding goes on. So the professional bodies, we have to set one. So how do we develop manpower? I've said that welding education and training. How do you have education? Go to the classroom. You hear lectures. You have seminars, courses. You read. You memorize. You understand some principles and theory. And then you do some limited practicals. And the practicals that we do is to let you have a feel of how the main thing is. You go to the field and you see that one plus one is not necessarily one or two. Things that you do in classroom, you have to do it. In. So the, the ways and means so in Ghana you do experiment doesn't fit the white man then you write sources of error you write so many sources of error it could be the right thing and then when we perform our experiment we say room temperature what is room temperature tell me what is room temperature in Ghana is it tamale or oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to also have our own standard the white man will say 22 degrees right or 20 degrees right? this is room temperature Oh, what is your room temperature? <laughs> when the fire is on, it's still 25. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how we do the education, like the way we go to school. Then the training, the training has to do with the hands-on, and then under an expert supervision. Then you learn the techniques of doing that. And then you do some basic tests, practical ones. And then they, when you pass, because when they give their samples to you, you will, they test and make sure that it falls within the standard. Then they give you a certificate. Then it means that you now are ready to be taken to the rig to go and weld. Okay? So how do we have to do that? I've said this, and then it is not only in, 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 in welding. All the engineering, there should be education and training. Kakos School of Mines was very lucky because they started with School of Mines, and the mines were there. 
After lectures or vacation, they go to the mines and then they do practicals. Formerly, they were even doing one year practicals. So by the time they finish, they have a lot of hands on. But when it comes to other engineering, but every mechanical engineer is a maintenance officer. <laughs> when that thing gets spoiled, they say, go and buy some. You can't design and produce. All the energy experts in Ghana, when we had power off, they were there. They can talk, give policy. <laughs> Who make the transformer? <laughs> Who make? So we have to move towards that direction. So the intention, you don't they say, we just want to educate and train. There must be an intention that is good. And then you have to implement that intention by applying the program. Then the program must be followed with persistence. When we say national interest, we must all be involved. That's why we must have a national body like Ghana World Institute tied to the American world and make sure that we work to the standard. That it become a standard. You don't just work, somebody must inspect, approve it before it moves on. In conclusion, welding is an indispensable tool technological tool. If you want to make a, 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 a space, a craft, you have to weld. You don't use manual welding, you have expensive laser and all those things. If you don't develop our welding, then we should forget about building high level thing. Anything that you make, you have to join. And then it has application in many sectors, oil and gas, building, construction, mining. And I want to state that welding is not for drop out. Ghana needs <laughs> manpower in welding operation to meet the demand of oil and gas. The lady was talking about building a car. You see, and we have local content, but the local content will not work here because they won't find the qualified workers. In fact, when they were bringing the petroleum uh, at Kane West, I was 18, I told the lady, Bring word and say, no, no, as for word, we want to keep it over there. <laughs> and now people they didn't understand, so they didn't impress that. If you had impressed, we would have had that. Because they are bringing their people, the world one, I don't know, maybe about a thousand per hour, they will take the money and they go back. Right. And if you have a good world system, <laughs> that will tell you this. Imagine the number of electrodes being used per day in Ghana. A day. You know electrode? Yeah. Yeah. In Kumasi, a craft to so, so thousands, all important. We have to start making it here to give jobs to geologists because of the covering, the metallurgists, the chemists, so so and so, and we'll be engaged in doing a whole lot of things. Manpower in Wadian can be developed through education and training. Education gives us broad knowledge with regards to principles and theory. World, on the hand, other hand, gives us both skills to achieve satisfactory world. Education is necessary, but not sufficient. Now, Ghanaians are full of education, but that is not sufficient to build a nation. It must be complemented by training, because the training adds value to the person who has been educated. Education and training are necessary for Ghana. World in education and training should start with intention and is implemented by applying the program and by realizing it with assistance. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Prof. Kofi. I'd like to address, I think, your last but three submission on the fact that um, regarding welding, local content may not work. But I didn't say to not what say currently. What we have, we will meet the demand. Yeah. I'm not saying to not work. It will only work if we satisfy them. Otherwise, they won't okay. employ them. Well, because of time constraints, yeah. as part of our presentation, we are not able to highlight a lot of things. Yeah. So I'd like to take this platform yeah. to just expand on the welding. Yeah. So in my earlier presentation, I mentioned that we visited five technical schools and universities. And of course, we came to KNUSD, you remember. And the World Bank has sponsored three institutions, the um, Kikam Technical School, Takrade Technical Institute. And then also I mentioned the fact that Talo and their partners have developed the JTTC. 
and then also with the Re uh, Regional Maritime University, a welding and fabrication center has been developed. And what, of course, the consumables for these training are expensive. So when we came to the various institutions, every one of you mentioned that. So as part of government's policy to ensure that, and you are right, 20% or more of the jobs done in the upstream sector is about welding. And I told you behind your house, you can even get a welder. And you are enlightening us that welders are meant to be people with degrees and or maybe in future we'll liaise with the necessary, maybe the Ministry of Education yourself, I don't know. But all I want to say is that currently the Petroleum Commission has ticked welding as one of the key areas and um, everything has to start with a step. So right now we've contacted the various institutions. The next step, like I mentioned earlier, is to talk to the Ministry of Education and corporate see how if we can get sponsorship for the consumables, how you the institutions can even self-generate monies to train people. So I just want to sound a word of comfort that yes, we know this is the problem. Most of them didn't get a chance to go to the KNSDs and all to have a first degree. But at least they've gotten some skill. We can use that through these um, welding centers and labs and things we have done. So there's something being done in the next um, two to five years, we may see Ghanaian welders offshore. Yeah, that, that you address that. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. The Nokakam Institute, all these things have been part of that. But you know, Ghana, you start, and when it comes, they cut you off. I'm the one who, who, who gave the lecture at Maritime University when the World Bank was coming because one of my students works there. So he called me. And then I gave the letter to convince them that okay, come. There are a lot of welding equipments there. You can be there for more than two years. You know that. And nobody is using it because they are not competent in your field. So what I'm saying is this: that our welders now, we have to give them training, education and training. Okay, so you call them to the classroom, those who are going to KTI, we teach them why you have to weld this and let them practical. And then, as they do that with the supervision, they will qualify. Because when they weld, we will test. And those who pass, we will certify them. So what I'm saying is that currently, if they are not certified, they will not satisfy the local content. But what we are doing is what we have started. So I ended up, you have the intention. But the intention alone is not enough. What did I say? The intention must be implemented. OK? And then you have to do a program to implement it. And if you don't say to implement it with persistence, it will fail. How many times government have intentions that will do this? And then the intention is not followed with a, a well program. Now, if there are no well set up program and not getting people to follow up the program, then everything starts to. So it's a good initiative. And I give you top out for that. But you shouldn't stand there, it should continue. And the problem is that when the money comes and those things, you may give it to somebody who has no knowledge about the thing. Okay? Because they will give it to somebody to run it. And that person running it, you know, that's what Ken Westy came in. That we have engineers, mechanical university involved, chemistry, everything, uh, science, engineering. Okay? And then we work in hand to hand with them. We set up a center, we train, and then we move it forward. So it is in line with what you are saying. But what I'm saying is that for the past years that we have the oil, our welders have not benefited. Reason being that they are not certified. So we have to certify them. And the intention of so many people there is that they are only looking at the world that being certified. They are not looking at the world in engineer. They are not looking at the world in supervisor. They are not looking at the world in educator. They are not looking at the rest. So if the oil industry is off, those people who are satisfied, they are still unemployed again. But we have to move forward beyond that small technical thing and develop the higher level. That's what I'm saying. All right, Prof. My name is Kofi Kwarting. Oh, you haven't finished. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I'll share her sentiment. Yeah. The, sometimes these conferences, it's not only about the challenges that we point out, but practical solutions that we can also I get, I develop. Get, I get to you. And you see, one of our students <laughs> asked a question and said, what is the school training us? 
Good. It's, it's true that the university should teach yes. and the industry should play part. But as you are aware, in other countries, the lecturers themselves are industry persons. Yes. That's the difference here. Yeah. The lecturers themselves in other countries, they are industry persons. Yes. So even some have written books on the but here and the follow up. Sometimes, no matter our good initiative, we are limited. Like you pointing out that car seats shouldn't be welded. Yes. So academia, you yeah. pointed it out. Yeah. How, how, how can we then solve it? Because you know that most of us then, because why people die is the impact. Yeah. Impact to the those weathers. So what can we do about it? Yes. The job of a professor is to teach and publish and put things in public domain. <laughs> And profess. Yes, and profess. <laughs> so I've done my part, okay? And back to your question. Even when you go to the US, we have teaching universities and we have research universities. Now, outside, if you are a professor, you teach one or two courses and you do research. And the research is industry driven. Now, the industry will bring money to the university. Then sponsor a student to, to do a research. And because of that, I'm committed. Okay? We work and we send the thing there. Here, the industries, you go there, you ask them, you have a problem that they don't have. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. Yes, they don't know. Or they don't have. The second part is that you have had experience if you have first class and then you are going to look for a job somewhere. They'll say there's no space. But yes. They are afraid that one that says scholarship, you will get it. <laughs> so they will not even allow you. Go outside. All the industry, we have PhDs, M MSCs, and so, so and so, who are able to identify problem and send it to the university to work. Here, people are not even identifying problems. Let the law bring in it there. It's not that we don't want to work. And I always talk about that. I'm teaching about only one, two percent of all that I know. Okay, because I'm a professor and I have to teach undergrad. I can't teach them more than yeah. undergrad. Okay, so I'm not even being used. And the government pays me for teaching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that is true. I was sharing something with a friend. That there's a very uh, public health issue that I have researched into and published. Nobody is talking about. And the issue is that, don't be scared, the issue is that everybody eats cane, cane, corn, apple, and everything. The metals that they used to are being done by these artisans. Now, it wears into the food. And I've done research to show. And then we have more iron in our system. And then it can cause you ca cancer, it can cause pressure, it can do. isn't it? I've done that. It's in the public domain. And I've looked over to get money to solve those. Things. I have answers. I can't use my pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> The culture around welding in this country is bad. We've always thought that welding belongs to the dropout. And um, with the coming up of the oil and gas industry, welding is very important. And I'm happy that the Regional Commission has brought that out. But it's important for them to know that at this stage, we are not just apportioning blame. Yes. No. Our duty is to come out with the problems. It's not that we just want to talk. There's no good way to talk shop. Yeah. They are responsible mm -hmm. to help in solving some of the problems. They have started. Yes. But at least we have said that this is the issue that stands out. Yeah. What I want them to do is to challenge you to come up with a paper yes. which addresses those issues that they can take as a baby and run with it to all their petroleum companies to come up to the, um, to the um, support of the welding industry. Thank you. And because of that, I just want to say that in my department, I have devoted one semester to teaching of welding, so that that thing will continue. When that, in fact, I have to acknowledge that you have decided to help KNUST in this direction. And then after a year, I will just write it the budget myself. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Let's have a prof, for, uh, prof coffee, prof Samuel coffee of the Material Science uh, Department of KNUST. Mr. Chairman, um, prof doesn't know that I started off as a materials engineering student. Seriously, I didn't know that there was no part of the car that needed to be welded. 
God said, when you are looking to buy a car, we look at all this car is fun. Can you move the world and use the top and in the whole front? You have to stretch it, cut, and do things with it. Um, we didn't know that these things were serious matters. Thank you very much for your presentation. What I have seen today tells us that we need to do a lot more. Particularly when it says it's not for dropouts, as if it's a joke, but there's a catch whether we need to look at it. It's very, very good. If you can present things in those ways, you know, it sticks to the, the mind and we can work on it. Uh, I believe that like, uh, with the oil industry coming up, this problem has come out very clearly that we lack that capacity to, you know, to take advantage of what is available for us. We say that when um, like the Jews, when the dollar gets into their hand, it takes about a year for that dollar to get out. 18 years. Ah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so it says if you multiply by 18. <laughs> now, in our case, we take a loan. And the man who brings the loan, he comes and takes the, the money back and we pay the loan. Which means that we don't even have a second of that money. So all these things are kind of capacity building things which we need to take on board. And like Peter said, it should not be a battle of um, Know, who, who is going to win or who is going to lose. It should be all of us seeing the problem as it is and working towards it so that we can have a better Ghana for all of us. We don't know who, who is going to work something for us and one day to blow in our face and we have all sorts of issues. So thank you very much, Prof.